happy Saturday evening, everybody. Um, we, are we ready for another sip and paint? I've got my beautiful, uh, I'm going to show you this. This is from my friend in Sydney. She sent me a case of family wine. Her cousin owns a winery down in Adelaide. And I uh, recently did a birthday party for her daughter in Sydney via Zoom. And she sent me a case of her fabulous wine. So I'm drinking one of them tonight. It is a Grenache. No idea the other words. They're too uh, Spanish or something. Anyway, so that's me. And tonight we are going Uzzy, Uzzy, Uzzy. And we have already done our beautiful turtle with the kids in Paint and Picnic. And now we're doing a black cockatoo. Now, without knowing an awful lot about my bird world, I'm not quite sure if they are cockatoos or the parrots or their macaws or something like that. Anyway, it looks like a cockatoo, but instead of the white body and the yellow fringe or whatever they call it, it's all black. But painting something all black isn't going to be that exciting, let's be honest. So we're going to do it in tones of blues and purples. There's an awful lot of skill, I would say, you need to do, and a, an awful lot of courage that you'll need, because you'll need to blend colours. So pretty much this painting is in a very limited palette. Um, if you are using felt tip pens, or if you are using coloured pencils, coloured pencils would be easier than felt tip pens, because you'll be able to change the, the gradient, but you're probably only going to have two colours, yeah? You're probably going to have two blues, a light blue and a dark blue. If that's the case, then think what else you can use. So you could use a grey, you could use a purple. You probably have two purples in felt tip pens and in coloured pencils. If you're using pastels, again, think about the cool colours. So on my um, Facebook page, um, the banner has got a picture of the, of the cockatoo there, so you can pull that up for reference. But... When we're painting with it, there's quite a bit of texture because we're going to try and lay the strokes over each other to create the feathers and the shape. Uh, if you're using watercolour, I reckon it's going to be a soft blend and then you're going to have to draw in some details, okay? So that's kind of where we're at. It's a bit of an experiment. I certainly have never done it in lots of different mediums. Um, and today I've been painting for myself, so I haven't had any time to even practice and test it out. So we're in virgin territory here, people. And I'm okay with that. That's the whole point about this sip and paint. You're not paying for it, so it's all experimentation. You're experimenting with the best. And uh, that's fine. That's the way it is, isn't it? Plus, life's starting to get back to normal here in Queensland. The kids off went off on play dates and a sleepover. Uh, one had a birthday party just with five friends. Um, so, you know, as things are starting to get back to normal, obviously our lives are starting to get a little bit more busy and a bit more challenging. So um, things will change. Uh, we'll talk more about that as we go on. But essentially, what are you going to need? Well, you can see here, this is my palette. I've put all the blues that I've got on um, a piece of, on a plastic, the upside down of my mat. Um, and I've got white. Now we are going to be blending blues, but if you do have a couple of acrylics, different colour blues, then um, put them out already. It'll just save you one extra blend, okay? We're going to draw our cockatoo first using a paintbrush, pencil if you're using pencil, um, and then we're going to start with the outside and work in, okay? Exactly the same if you're doing felt it pens or if you're using coloured pencils. We want to kind of overlay things, all right? So we need to start from the outside and work in. Uh, give me a shout out and let me know where you're calling from. So, I'm here in the gap. My name's Karen. You say, I'm in wherever you are. My name is Blah. And we all go, hello, Blah. And we all kind of have this big virtual hug. So I can see we've got Louise, Teresa, Joe. Pam, Lana and Vicky on board so far. I have a brand new toy. I've got lots of new toys actually. I've got a, if I just wave my hand here. Whoa. This camera is on a bendy tripod. You know, like the pros have. I can't show you it because otherwise it will move. 
So that is kind of just hanging like the claw. And then what other toy do I have? I have a lapel mic, but it only came today, so it's not quite set up. And I have a brand new laptop, which I used all my pennies in my bank so that I could stream and you could have this picture and this picture at the same time. Who knew? It's so cool. Um, because as I said to you, I am not going to stop this. Life might kick its ass and go back to normal, but this Bess is going to still on do, doing this on Facebook for you. Okay, so we're going to still have lots of fun nights. So let's see. We've got Catherine who's watching from Kapira. We've got Jill and Kim. Um, they're in the gap. We've got Sol and Rachel in the gap. Hi, guys. Vicky in Sydney. Welcome, Vicky. Louise, I oh, know, fancy schmancy. That's me now. I'm very fancy schmancy. Uh, we've got Diane. She's telling me I'm high tech. I absolutely have no idea. Come, 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 come. Hang on, just two minutes. Come. This. This is, this is my gorgeous husband, and without him, none of this would be possible. I would still be holding it like this and wobbling it in my face. Oh, Lordy, he's a genius. Oh, oh, just split. Look, look. COVID split. The, the COVID waste has happened. I've just split my, my, um, smock. Oh, my God, Mum, I've had it since uni. That can't possibly happen. I got too excited to put my hands in my pockets and I ripped it. Never mind. Hi, Karen from Helena. Hi, guys. Kelly, hi. Yeah, you're just a couple of miles, you're a couple of meters that way, aren't you? Who else have we got? We've got Emily Cooper. I'm not painting because uh, she had a lion. Going to catch up in the evening. Good job. Emily is from Cornwall. Uh, we've got quite a few on. That's fantastic. Robert, Sunny from Logan. Hi. So, because I've got this beautiful new computer, instead of having an iPad there with my messages, a computer, a phone, it's all in one. So fancy. And actually, what's even more fancy is that my keys, and David will roll his eyes at this because he's like, for God's sake, such a woman. It's like, you buy somebody a Lamborghini, no idea what the Lamborghini is, but they ask what colour. Well, when this big computer came, but which apparently has lots of grunt, who knows, um, the keys are rainbow colour. Oh, I just went, oh, it's made for me. It's made for me. We've got Ren in the Gap. Uh, who else have we got? Joe Davey. Awesome. Now, this is going to be interesting, okay? Because when you're paying, we've got Linda from Cornwall. Hello, Linda. Welcome, welcome. Come on in. Come into the world of the best crazy Saturday night. Um, it's one of those things, isn't it? Where I am now going to... So, last week, I thought I found a really easy painting and we ended up being like two and a half hours and it was stressful as hell. So, um, <laughs> so this week, I've gone for a simpler composition. It's just a bird. But obviously, the blending is going to be a bit tricky. So, what I want to say to you is this. Don't give up. And if you get stressed, just drink, okay? Drink your tea, drink your coffee, drink whatever you want. Let it dry and come back to it, yeah? Now, I've just posted, so if you haven't seen it, have a look. I painted for two hours this afternoon, and I repainted my entire Peru pigeons, and I did it on a time lapse for you, so you can see. That's what I did. Why? Because I absolutely loved the painting, but last week, because I was so worried about the time, I was really anxious that I was keeping you all so late. And I know, for example, Renee had her daughter there, and I was thinking, oh my God, she's so late for bed. And so I was painting really fast, and I probably wasn't being that careful. And the next day when I looked at my painting, I thought, no, it's not as deep, you know, it's just not as careful as I wanted it to be. And so I just thought, you know what? I'm just going to go back and repaint. And repainting's okay. It's a bit like using a razor, people. It's fine, okay? So look, if you haven't seen it, here it is. It's still wet because I've only just finished painting it, but look at the detail. So I really went to town and I really pimped it up, painted some little grass and some little bits on the bottom. And I just thought, I actually really want this to hang in our house at home. So I just really gave it a bit of attention. And so maybe you've done a painting before and you're just not quite happy with some of it, 
then why don't you just take it out on a quiet moment? It won't take the same amount of time as your other sip and paints, but you can just fast forward where you got to, which went a bit awry, and then just pause because obviously it's been recorded, all right? So if this one, if you lose it a little bit, then just don't stress. You can always go back to it. Now, I have no canvases left. I'm out of canvases, so I'm on paper, okay? I'm on paper, and we are going to, so I've got it all clipped, you know, to keep it straight. Um, it would be great if I could know, just so I know um, what materials you are using. So um, I'll assume you're all in paint, but let me know if you are doing pens, crayons, um, pencil, maybe. We had a, we had a, tin mine the other day just in black and white pencil it looked beautiful by the way so just let me know so that i can keep it in my head although i haven't practiced it i'm pretty sure i can wing it i'm pretty sure all right so who's ready give me a thumbs up are we ready to go i need to stop chatting let's go let's go let's go canvas acrylics acrylics beautiful acrylics acrylics on paper good 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 bye david bye daisy thanks for setting me up I'm here on my own, people. I have no fam today. Just me. You've just got the best all to yourself. We're doing watercolour pencils. Okay, that's fine. So that should actually should be quite easy, Rob and Sam, because, um, uh, because you'll do the pencils first and you'll layer it really lovely. Then you can add as much water as you want or as little. Then, if you want to let it dry, you can then go back over it in pencil. So that's, I, I think that will work beautifully. Acrylics, 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 pastel. Okay, Kelly, with yours, you want to be careful. You're going to end up with quite a lot of blending because we're doing one tone, okay? So we are going to start with the darkest. We're going to start with the... We are going to start with the darkest first. So my tip for you is get yourself a cloth that's wet. So this is my wet cloth. The whole thing is wet. Get yourself a wet cloth so that you can keep wiping your fingers because pastels will get um, blendy and messy quite quickly, okay? So I would say get that on hand. Acrylics, thanks for the tip. Beautiful, yeah, okay. So we've got kids on board, awesome. All right, brilliant. So, and, and likewise, if I've never done this with you and it's a little bit advanced, but if you're doing this sort of painting, this sort of painting where you've just got one tone, one shade, and we've got an extra colour, but um, which by the way is called value when you're doing a value painting, which is one tone. So in the arty world, you are now learning an actual technique. Um, when you're doing one colour, afterwards it, it can work really nicely to draw with a black pen or a blue pen, a biro, so you actually create an extra layer of media afterwards so you can do those details. It's really quite advanced, but it can look amazing, all right? But that's for you to decide. Okay, Sol says, what colors do we need? Blue. However many blues you've got, if you've only got the one, like a this color blue, then grab yourself a purple as well. You'll need white. You will need a kind of golden color for the very, very end, but you could use yellow or orange. So if you're, if you're looking at the color wheel, opposite to blue is yellow. So when you're doing it and you want the total contrast, then yellow is the punchiest. And that ochre color, which is like a golden yellow, it's actually part of the brown family, but that ochre color will be a warmer, than sort of a hot yellow, if you like. If you've got a teal colour, you can put that one out as well. But pretty much blue and white, and we might, we might use a tiny bit of black. If you're using pencils, you'll want to use as many of those cool colours as you can. Uh, and if you don't want to do blue, by the way, choose something else. If you want to do a whole macaw in, blue, in green, then of course you can, that's absolutely fine. Okay, thank you. What colours do we need? So that's it. All right. So I think we're good to go. Everyone seems happy. Give me a thumbs up. Give me some love. You know I love love. Love, love, love. Got some stories to share tonight. Just you and me. How much fun are we going to have? All right, let's go. So you should see two of me. Oh my God, could it ever get any better? There's me here and there's me there. I love it. My ego's too big for this. Okay, I need a drink. 
Okay, the first thing we're going to do then is we're going to sketch it out, people. So you need your pencil. If you're doing pastels, Kelly, I would do the sketch first in a pencil, okay? Um, watercolour people, um, watercolour pencils, use a regular pencil first, I think, to draw it out. Or you could just use the blue pencil. Okay, we're going to... The picture pretty much fills the entirety of this, okay? So we are pretty big. So, if, you know, that's the beak, that's the rest of the head, there's the body. It's pretty bold. And I'm not going to keep you as long, I promise, as last week. Okay, so I'm going to use, as usual, I'm using the blue. Uh -huh. Got to work out where my motions are. Um, but I'm using it quite watery, yeah, because I want to be able to sketch with it. So a little blue on my brush, using it quite watery. Do you know what, what, what is weird, and I've got to get used to it, and obviously I'm not used to it, is that when I look at this camera to talk to you, I keep looking at myself, but actually I need to look there, which is the camera, which means then I look at you. Otherwise, I just look at myself. But I'll get used to that. Okay, let's go, let's go, let's go! All right. Pretty much you can see where I've put the clips. That's my halfway mark, yeah? That's my halfway mark. If you want to put a couple of dots on yours, put a couple of dots. Um, and you can pretty much see that the top of my easel, let's just put it in the halfway for you. So the top of my easel, that's my halfway mark as well, all right? So if you want to put your dots, put your dots on, okay? All right. Mum, I'm just going to ask you, can you just send me a comment? Just send, say hello or something just so I can see that the comments are rolling okay so the first so this is my halfway this is my top this is my bottom I'm going to do the beak and the beak is going to be just above that halfway mark okay the beak is kind of like a triangle but it's a curve on one side and then a slice of cheese all right so here we go I'm just going to get my sketch. Look, this is what I sketched out earlier when I was planning it. So I'm just going to get my sketch to make sure I get it right. I'm going in about, about as long as my finger. Okay, about as long as my finger is where I'm starting from. In that top left-hand corner. Gorgeous girl. Thanks, Mum. Yeah, all good. Brilliant. I know it's working. Okay. I want you to do a curve for the beak. And we all know what a, the beak looks like. It's kind of a hook, and it's not really bulbous, so don't do a too big a hook. It's kind of like, you know, like that, I guess. So here we go. I'm just going to use my hand like this nicely to make sure I've got the right curve. So I don't want it to go really out and in. I just want it to be a nice curve. And I'm going to set it. It's going to be, I reckon, about 10 centimetres long, maybe eight. One, two, three, and there it is. So that's going to be the hook of my, the hook of my beak, okay? The hook of my beak. Are we ready to go? Here we go, people. We are in it. We are motoring. Okay, now I'm going to do the slice of pie or slice of pizza. So I'm straight line down there and straight line down there. So you end up with a piece of Trivial Pursuit. I hate that game. I'm junk at it. I'm so bad. In fact, I struggle, struggle with quizzes. I know everybody loves them. Everyone will go, oh, I love a good pub quiz. Oh my God, I'm rubbish, rubbish. We do a quiz night at Hilda Road. It's hilarious. It's all about the drink and the costume, quite frankly, for me. Okay, so there's our beak. Now, going straight from that corner, if I went horizontal across, I'm going across two centimeters I would say. Can you all see that point there? Okay, but then I want to go up one centimeter. Across two centimeters, up one centimeter, and we're going to put our, the eyeball in, and the eyeball isn't as big as you think it will be. Spin your brush round, and then jot it down, okay? Spin your brush round, and then jot it down. Good job. Beautiful. So far, so good. Okay. We're now going to shape out the rest of our black cockatoo. Okay. So from this point here, where the beak is, we're going to take it and we're going to curve a nice sweeping curve right to the top of the picture, right to the top of your canvas or your paper. 
We will not put the top of the hair in, uh, not the hair, feathers. We won't put it in, okay? So the mohawk is going to be gone off. All right, so I'm going to get my swoopy action. If I do this, then I've got a nice swoop. Ready? One, two, three, and I'm swooping up. One, two, three, and I'm swooping up. Don't be stressed if you make a mistake or you don't like it. Just reposition it. It's all good. You can't get it wrong at this stage. Beautiful. Hopefully everybody's doing okay so far. All right, now, here's your corner, top right-hand corner. And if you look, you should be able to draw an invisible line down to the eye, pretty much. Top right-hand corner, down to the eye. They should be in a fairly good angle, a fairly good angle. Well, I'm going to look, if I go, if I put my pen, uh, paintbrush there for you, I'm going to go halfway between the eye and the corner, and I'm going to put a dot. And this is where the big, the big fan of hair, or mohawk, this is the end of the top of it. So I'm going to go backwards to that point, okay? That's just a reference so I know where it's going. Uh, morning, Sylvia. Sylvia, I totally agree with her about quizzes. I know. Everybody always wants me on the, That's so big-headed. Hang on, let me replace that. <laughs> people don't always want me on their quiz team, but people think it'd be fun if I'm on their quiz team because obviously I don't shut up and I do like a drink and I do like a natter. But I am rubbish. I'm so bad. In fact, last year, was it only last year? I think it was. Last year's Hilda Road School quiz, which is called Trivia Night, Ooh, hate it, but it's all about the costume, was the night of the royal wedding in England. Harry and, what's she called? Meghan. Harry and Meghan Markle. And obviously, fan, uh, phones are banned, aren't they? And uh, I got a bit of stick because I had the phone down here. And I was watching the royal wedding. I was drinking, watching the royal wedding. We were having a blast. Maybe that was the year before. Maybe that was two years ago. Anyway, that's what I remember about that quiz night. Okay, so hopefully you've got that line coming in. Are we good with that? Okay, now I want you to kind of draw a round shape like this. So watch me. I'm just, I'm just going to draw a round shape. It's going to be a loose shape because we're going to put feathers there. And I want it to go down there. I want it to keep going round. And I want it to go, because kind of that is where our feathers are going to be. All right, so that's just going to help us with that layer, that first layer of feathers. And then after that, we're literally just going to put a body down there and a body down there. And that's as much as the drawing. Gosh, he doesn't look a very good looking chap, does he? But that's okay. We can live with that. Beautiful. Sylvia is from Ludgeman WI. Well, welcome, Sylvia. Beautiful lady. Had so much fun with you ladies the other day, and I can't wait to do it again. I've got my, um, look, I've got my tin mine is over here still. There it is, which I did with you ladies. Had lots of comments about it. People are enjoying that one. For those of you that didn't do it because it was a, um, a morning here in Australia, because I did it for the UK WI, it's on my films, so if you like a good old tin mine, if you like this Cornish tin mine, you can follow it, all right? It's quite a nice one, that. And uh, the next painting I'm doing with them, which will be 10 o'clock in the morning for Australia again, um, is going to be a Cornish harbour, and it's going to be the same sort of colours, so they can fit nicely together. All right, we want to paint our background, or pastel your background, or watercolour pencil your background, I'm staying in the blue zone. I'm in the blue lane, okay? So I'm going for a baby blue. I want you to mix up a colour that's kind of, if I put this to the camera, maybe I should do it in the big camera. Can you see that colour? That sort of baby blue, blue colour. Now, this is white and blue with a tiddly bit of purple, okay? And I want you to paint your background. That's the next thing. We're going to paint our background. It doesn't have to be the same colour as me. You could decide that you want to go for more of a, I don't know, a contrasting colour, maybe green. Um, but we're just going to paint that background. You can see I'm going to add white at the set. See, see that? I've got white on my brush 
And I'm just going to mix my colours actually on the paper. I'm not going to worry about mixing it too much down there right at the moment because we're just doing the background. And you know me, I always like a bit of texture, don't I? So if you end up having that, that change of colour, I think that's good. All right. Now, I'm going to have to go under my clips. Quite often the problem with clips is that obviously, you know, you end up with a bit that's not painted. Sorry about my hair. I had a bit of a, I decided to cut fringe today, but I think I've got a cowlick. It never kind of sits properly. Anyway, the kids walked in and I had a sink full of hair and they're like, mum, what are you doing? I know, it's COVID, isn't it? It's COVID. It's driving us all nuts. That's what's happening. So I cut my own fringe. Uh, do you know why I cut my own fringe? I've got too many wrinkles. It's starting to look old. I know, I'm 48 and I've just got to own it. I know I've got to own it, but it's okay. No one can see me varicose veins. No one can see any of that, but my forehead seems to be quite large on TV. So I've decided to put a fringe in. Okay, so I'm just doing this lovely pale blue background. Going to mix up a bit more because I've run out. So I've just gone for, it's not a lavender, but it does have just a, it has a hue, a little hue of purple in it, but it's more of a baby blue, all right? And that's really so that the pale, blue, the dark blue in a minute when we do our um, cockatoo is going to really punch forward. Now, our, even though I'm going to, I'm just going to move that one. Even though we're going to paint the fringe right to the top, I'm just going to take my colour right through so that you make sure there's no area where there's just white up the top, okay? And I would do the same if you were pasteling or colouring. I would just, just put a tiny bit of colour just across the top, okay? Sort of into that corner there, like that, down that side, and then you're going to come in and do that bit underneath. I've got to keep moving my clips. But it's good for you to see me painting on paper, because at the end of the day, lots of you are painting on paper. So it's good for you to see that, you know, it's the same for me. I haven't used lots of water. I've kept it quite thick, yeah? Because I want it to have a nice, full colour. And I really want you to try and get right up to your drawing line, almost like let it disappear because we don't want that hard edge. In a minute, we're gonna be doing feathers. And that was just a guide, really, so we get the shape. So I'm just gonna paint over that blue line. If you're using colored pencils or anything like that, you might want to just rub it out, maybe. I'm not worried about the beak, because the beak is gonna be a hard, hard texture anyway, so. I am going to, is that all okay for everybody? You're so funny. Uh, brilliant. I'm going to get some red then. Awesome. Cornish Harbour. It is. I can't wait. I'm looking forward to that one. Beautiful. I do miss Cornwall. I saw on, I, David and I still have, um, like, feeds, uh, notifications from Cornwall Live, what's on Cornwall, we just can't let go. Anyway, I did note for all you Cornish folk, Barnacut is open next week, selling pasties. But, and for all of you Australians, Barnacut is the bomb in the pasty world down in the West Country. Okay, now, this is where we get serious, we, we put our foot on the gas. I always say we're going to start with the lightest first, yeah? However, in, I'm going to stand in front of this one to talk to you, get, get, get some big view. However, in this process, it is a step-by-step -step layering, okay? So we're going to have to approach it like patchwork. So I want you to be careful where you're putting your paint because... We don't want to over blend it. So we can kind of lay it on and then lay the next one next to it and lay the next one next to it. And it's kind of like, it's a lot of, um, most of the action is in the stroke, okay? 
So you'll need your biggest brush for this. For those of you that are doing it in pencil or pastel, you want to create little pockets of colour. So it's not just one line. You'll want to do kind of um, two centimetres, I would say, at a time. And you want to kind of grade the colour. So you want kind of um, dark. So that you might do, like, for example, you might do just blue there. And then you might do a pocket of purple, then a pocket of blue, then a pocket of light blue. So you kind of patchwork the colour in. But where I'm doing dark, you want to go with your dark tones. Where I'm doing light, you want to do your light tones. Okay? And some of you, when you're, because you're not using white, you're going to have to leave the paper as the white. All right? So you're going to have to work that one through. Okay. So to start off with, we are going to go, I want you to mix up your darkest blue. Okay? Your darkest blue. To mix up your darkest blue, so if you've only got one blue, which is this colour here, then add purple to it. You can add black, but just, I would get a scrap of paper, just put it to one side and test the colour before you put it on your masterpiece, okay? I've got this blue here, which is darker than the one I've got there, but I am still going to mix it with some purple to get a deeper version as well. Now, the reason why I don't like to add black straight away, sorry, my nose is really itchy. Um, the reason why I don't like to add black straight away I've, got, I've just painted myself, oh God, um, is because if you add black straight away, you can't go darker again. So if we start off with just a blue, then, and exactly the same if you're using colour pencils, you can lay a black on top afterwards, okay? But if you start with black, that's it, you're done, all right? Okay, here we go, people. Are you ready? Get that dark black. Starting to look great. Good job. Okay, get your darkest blue ready. And follow me. Now, watch how I'm doing this. Watch before you do it. I've got my big brush, and I am basically, I want to paint in a fan going out like this, okay? In a fan going out. So watch. I'm going to drag and stop. Drag and stop. Drag and stop. Drag and stop. Okay? Can you see that? So you can see that just using that technique itself, is creating the feathery texture. Now, you can hopefully see, and actually, I can't move my camera, but I can move my easel. If I put it up, and let me just take off one of these lights, so you don't have to glare, not that one. Well, let's take them both off. No, you need one on, hang on, we'll get there in a minute. No, that's too glary. That one, okay. Can you see, I've got some bits where I've got a deep stripe of paint that's come out and some bits where I haven't. That's fine. Don't overblend it, okay? You want that. That is doing tone and blend without you having to do anything. It's just how it's come out the brush. So watch me, push down and flick. And it does it by itself. I'm not overblending. I'm just going on top of it and flicking out. And you can see I'm starting to get that layering. All right? Okay, let me move it back. Get it in the right position, and we'll stick both lights on. Oh, is it better without the lights or with the lights? You let me know. Tell me, tell me if you think you tell me if you think it looks better with those lights on or without. If you think it looks better without, we'll keep them off, or I'll keep popping them on, and you can see it on and off. You let me know. Okay, so I'm doing. I'm doing the darkest, so it's my darkest blue with purple, and it's all this section. Right, when I get to this bit here, we want to get rid of this curve here, don't we? So we want it to end up looking like feathers. So pull it and go over that line. And this is what I meant about the people that are doing pastels or doing pencils, you want to do it in chunk blocks so it looks like a brush, or you get that kind of like chunky section of feathers, okay? Can't wait to see your pastel and your um, pencil versions. In fact, I might even have a go myself, I'm really intrigued. Okay, so I'm still doing these blue areas. Chunk, 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 okay? That's all dark blue there, still going. Chunk, chunk, chunk. I don't know why I started saying chunk. <laughs> That's okay, I don't mind. 
All right, now, I'm going to start to go around this eye here, okay? So, I'm going to go right up to the eye, and I'm just going to start to pull the colour away from the eye. If you get areas where looks good with, without, looks good with, with or without, on. Well, I'll tell you what, half of you want on and half of you want off. So let's put one on. Oh, no, not that one. I think that's too glary. Let's put one on and one off, okay? And then you've got a bit of both. Okay, when you've got areas like that where the paint hasn't come, just leave it, okay? Don't overpaint it, otherwise you're going to end up with just thick squares and you'll have no texture and it'll have no, it won't breathe. You want your painting to breathe so it looks like it's got some movement. This is all happening just with your brush, people. My best friend. Okay, so we're going round the eye. And I'm just gonna go to three o'clock, okay? Three o'clock, and then I'm gonna stop with the dark. Okay, three o'clock. But I wanna go round to nine o'clock. So professional. Okay. Oh, bit of an overpaint there. I wish I didn't do that. Never mind. I've done it now. All right, so I've gone round to three o'clock, no, to nine o'clock, but I do want to go to the beak. So I'm going to go from the beak and I'm going to paint back towards the eye because I want that whole area to be dark, okay? Beautiful. Super impressed with you guys, super impressed with you. The only thing I don't like about doing this is I love chatting with you and uh, I love having the chat pop up and we're all having a good chat. I wish I could see your art. I just want to hug your art, but I can't see it. So I've just got to hope you're doing great things. Okay, Sam, you've got a scary face. Does that is that face saying something like, as in you've made a mistake <laughs> or oh my god maybe pippy and that are watching and i just verbalized swearing sorry um i'm loving doing this awesome yay <laughs> see i don't need a family to have fun i'm happy on my own i've got my own girl time okay people we're going right up here now right up to your top right hand corner with the same paint paint the same paint color yeah, you're dark. Hi, Linda. You're watching and loving this. Yay. Where are you watching from, Linda? I can't remember. I try and remember where everyone's from. Ooh. I'm an airhead. I should be blonde, technically. Oh, that, sorry for anyone who's blonde. Ooh. It's a blonde joke. Hey, did you know, and I only found this out this week, or was it last week? There is a whole, um, well, there's a whole global joke about the name Karen, which obviously is my name. You all know me as Bess. Thank God I say Bess. But there's this whole joke that Karens have, <laughs> are middle-aged women with a bob, boom. Uh, they're middle-aged women with a bob who have too much to say and often, what do they say? Oh, I want to speak to the manager. That is me. I am a Karen. And who knew, but you can get flipping t-shirts. You can get t-shirts. There's a t-shirt I saw on the internet today that has a blonde bob and with no face. And it says, I want to speak to the manager. I think, I, I think I've got to get myself one because actually I think the whole thing is hilarious. Because maybe I am a Karen, but Karen is such a weird name anyway. I never liked my name, sorry, mum. Mm. Um, I never liked my name. Um, it's too harsh. I'm a round person. I need a round name like Poppy or something is what I feel like I should be called. But I'm called Karen. Anyway, that's why I call myself Bess. Right, we're going right up to this top right hand corner here, peeps, with this dark colour. Now, I want you to start here and I want you to pull backwards, okay? Start at the outside and you're going to pull backwards. Pull. And it will, it will, woo! Big drip. It will pull in as far as it pulls in, okay? Pull. Pull. Don't worry about where it finishes because we are layering this. Pull. Pull, okay? <laughs> Just a minute ago, 
in order to paint, I had to say the word chunk, chunk, chunk. Now I'm saying pull, pull, pull. It's, uh, it's, just, it's just the way I am. I can't be anything else. I am what I am, people. I've said many times before, I'm very Vegemite or very Marmite. You either love me or you hate me. If you hate me, mute me. I'm still a great art teacher. Just take the sand off. It's quite easy. Okay, and I'm doing, so I've done that top layer. I'm now doing a second row, yeah? So I'm starting from kind of where the paint, uh, where the paint dragged and went dry, I'm kind of starting there. Using my chisel, using my square brush, use whatever brush you've got, put it there, chunk it back in. Chunk. 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 If you're using pencils or pastels, again, do it in sections, okay? And then you'll get that same technique. Okay, let's see. Yeah, we can call, we all call you Poppy then. Perfect, call me Poppy. Love you the way you are, I know. But mum, I'm going to say, Pam isn't a great name either. It's, I know you're a beautiful person and I love you. And actually, well, I love you to the moon and back, you know that. However, and we all call you Palama because, was it Thomas that couldn't pronounce Pamela? I can't even remember how we started calling you Palama. But anyway, we call my mum Palama. Um, but Pam, it's a bad name, isn't it? It's like Karen. They're in the real bad name frame. I can't stand it. Ah! Okay, this is hilarious. I only just discovered this, but so glad. Yes, Helena, you Google, you Google the whole Karen thing. There is memes. I've got memes about Karen. In fact, I feel like I should do my own meme. I don't know how to do a meme, but I can ask my 14-year-old son. He'll get a meme done straight away. Apparently, it's very cool. But I feel like I want to do a meme because I think I am Karen. And there is, like, there is young people in their 20s walking around with Karen t-shirts. It's hilarious. Anyway, I was doing a class and someone said to me on my chat, hmm, or was it, I can't remember if it was a class or not. And someone said something about it being a Karen. And I said, I don't know what you're talking about. And they're like, what do you mean you don't know? Where have you lived? What rock have you lived under? I went, I live in the gap. Nothing happens in the gap. It's like living in Cornwall. It's the Brisbane version of Cornwall. It just, it just is what it is. We just hang out together. <laughs> and uh, we're not really bothered about the rest of the world. Do you know what I mean? Ah, oh, let me know which meme you like and I'll make you a t-shirt. My God, my heart just exploded. Yes, Woo! I'm going to get a Karen t-shirt. Bing. All right, so we've done that block. We've done that block. We now need to move down here. I'm going to ask you to add a bit of black. All right. Don't add too much. Be kind. You can always add a little bit more, but just add a, just make your darkest blue a bit darker, okay? So on the 10, if let's say that dark blue was an eight, I wanna get to a 10. If your dark blue was a seven, you wanna get to a nine. You don't wanna go all the way to black, but you wanna kind of, so here we go. I gotta check because earlier on when I was painting the turtle, I put brown in it instead of black. Okay, so I'm gonna add a bit of, there's my little, let me show you, tip it up, boop. There's my little, a pooch of um, darkness. I'm just going to squeeze and stop. So I've just added a bit of squeeze. It's quite fun, isn't it? Squeeze and stop. All right. Going to add a little bit of black. So uh, let me do this to camera so you can see. So there's my little bit of... Ooh! Hang on. Can I just show you? This is how un, um, um, precious I am with art. I'm doing this on the back of a Claude Monet. Well, not a real Claude Monet, but on the one I painted, which is on a hard board, which is on a board that I did a project for school. See, um, you know, recycle, upcycle, reuse, it's all good. Okay, so I've got my black. Now, what I don't want to do is put my paintbrush straight in that black. I want to eke my black into the purpley blue area, which means I've always got an area which is jet black. I'm trying to get a good, there we go. If it drips, we're buggered, but anyway. So I'm trying to get a mushy area, which is, can you see, it's darker than navy, but it's the black is still the black, the purple is still the purple, but I've got that little area there, which is darker. 
Can you see that? Hopefully you can see that. All right, I've got to put it down otherwise it's going to drip all over the floor. Okay, we are going underneath this part of our bird. Okay, here we go. I'm going as close as I can to that feather without touching it and I'm striking down and going down. Chunk it down, baby. Chunk. 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 Don't worry about the little bit of white, we can fill that in afterwards. Right now, we just want to get that real depth. And this is going to be hard for you to see on the TV, or the TV. Well, actually, if, Kim's if Kim is in tonight, she does do it on her TV. It's going to be hard for you to see on uh, my phone, but I do want you to be able to understand that that is one blue, and this is two tones darker, yeah? Okay. So I'm just chunking that down, and I want to chunk that colour here, right down to the middle. Chunk, 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 chunk. So all of that bit there is that dark, dark colour. Yeah? Everybody okay so far? Alright, now where we've done these top plumes, I want you to get that dark colour, and on the very far side, I want you to start on the outside and chunk a dark one in, and then where the curve is, I want you to chunk another dark one in. Chunk, chunk. So you end up having two dark, dark swords, swords, um, swooshes. Swoosh, swoosh, just swoosh. Now, I was so good today, I, um... I organised dinner, it's in the slow cooker, Chinese slow cooked beef with rice, but because I got so engrossed in painting my painting, and then I had to do the turtle for the kids, by the time I got home it was half past six, I had to come straight back out. So I've had no dinner, dinner David's sorting out with the kids, so I'm just going to have some crisps. These could be quite noisy on TV, I'm sorry if they are. But they're very nice. Look. Deli rock chips, honey soy chicken. Very nice. Uh, yeah, Kim and Jill are watching you on TV. <laughs> it is my moment of fame. For you Australians, you need to Google 1970s stroke 80s, because obviously I was born in 71, Blue Peter. When you watch Blue Peter, which was a children's TV show, you will see that was my aspiration. When I was a child, all I wanted to be was a Blue Peter presenter. I wanted to be on the TV. I even wrote to a couple of shows to ask to be on TV. Never quite made it. Went to drama school, can I say? Did a few performancey things, but uh, ended up in the art world. Well, it was a, it was a drama and art degree. Well, sort of. Okay. Got our dark bit. Okay, if you have another smaller pe uh, paintbrush, I want you to switch it out, okay? Uh, I should show you on the big one. So I've, got, I've been using that big square one, and now I'm going to go for a smaller square. If you haven't got a square, just use a small round. Don't, you don't need to wash that, we're going to be using it the whole time. You don't need to wash it. Okay, with that dark tone... So those of you doing pastel that done blue and then added some black with it, or the watercolour pencils where you've done blue first and maybe you've added black over the top, we are basically going to add black now here around the eye. So not, not black, sorry. We're going to add our blue black. You know that colour we've just made, which let's say is our tone 9, black being 10. We're just going to add some of that around this eye bit, okay? So if you're doing it in pastel or... Um, Watercolour pencils, you're going to go over the blue, yeah, with a second layer. Okay, so watch me, peeps, with my blue-black, I'm just going to go chunk, little mini chunks, just over the top of that blue, just round the very edge of the eye. After I've done round the edge of the eye, I'm going to come down round the beak. And this is where I want to start shaping my beak a little bit. It's not really as straight as that, it needs to come in. So if you're not sure... Watch me while I shape it, and then you can shape yours. So you can see, I've just cut in a little bit there to create that hook shape. And now I'm just doing 
some small chunks of feathers in that dark tone just around that edge. I just need a little bit more because it will be a hard edge. So once I've got that hook shape, I just need to make sure I've got that sharp edge, okay? I'm going to move this closer, peeps, so you can see that. All right, so I've just gone round the eye, round the eye like that, and then I've just created a tiny little bit of a hook there, and I've gone down the beak. Yeah? Awesome. <clears throat> You're doing great. Chili and sour cream is my fave. I know, I love them. Honey soy is my favourite. Daisy loves honey soy. I have to say, normally I'm partial to something a bit more spicy. You know? I like a bit of... Mm -hmm. I like a bit of heat. I like a bit of bite, as David will say. Kids present, kids present. Roll it back. So last night, Thomas went for a sleepover. Every time he goes for a sleepover with Cheezel Muncher and their son, who is gorgeous, the family are amazing, and Ryan is Thomas's bestie, um, he has a great time, but they clearly don't sleep. He comes back in. This, this was my impression. This is my impression. And this is me on the other side. Hi, Tom! Morning! Tom. Hang on, this is this is as much as I got. <laughs> oh my god! He raised his eyebrows off me at me. I've been over the studio all day working. He raised his eyebrows at me, and that's all he did. And when I went home for that quick 15 minutes between classes, I said, Where's Tom? And David said, He's gone to sleep. So he obviously couldn't hack it. Okay, I'm gonna move this back in position now, peeps. Is that okay? You've seen that bit? All right, so let's get it back in the right position so everybody can see it. Ooh, a bit forward. There we go. I, I'm constantly looking top and bottom so you can see all of it. All right. So we've done round the eye, we've done down the beak. Now, with that black colour, not black, blue-black. It's the new colour. It's the blue, blue-black. You see these feathers here? I'm going to count them. One, two, three, four kind of thing. That bottom row where the bottom of the head is, yeah? I want you to go from the bottom of the feather up. Watch before you do, watch before you do. Okay, bottom of the feather, up. 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 I've only done it on one side, one side. Again, I'm gonna lift and bring it closer. So you can see, I've done it on one side one side, okay? All right, pop it back down. How much value am I giving you today? It's amazing! You are getting like a full on, high quality art class for zippity dip. But what do I say? You can't see the painting. Well, you can now, I've just put it back. Move, or is it, oh, hang on. Whoa, 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 got loads of questions. Need to move right. We can't see it because the mini pick is in front of it. Ah, okay, now you can see it, can't you? Sorry, 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 okay? Can you all see it? My mistake, I moved it forward and you couldn't see it because of the mini pick. Mm, technical. Okay, if I bring it forward now, uh, if I bring it that way, now can you see it? I've obviously got to look at the whole computer at the same time. So here you can see, I chunked up, chunked up, just the little bit there, the black's gone down there, and it's gone round the eye. Hopefully you can all see that, have a good look. If you're drinking, gone to the toilet, having a chat with somebody else, now's the time. I've put, put it up, put it up, put it up, put it up, and it's going back down. Let's get it in the right position. David's gonna be having a mare. He, I know I, he's working tonight, but I know he's secretly listening. I know you are. And he's set all this up, so he's gonna be checking that it's all working. <laughs> This man, what are you doing, Bessel? Leave the canvas alone! I know he'll be doing that. He'll be having a mare. Okay, so we've done those little bits of chunky black there, yeah? I just want to do exactly the same. So where we've got white gaps, I want you to go over your white gaps with a chunk lid with your little brush and just add in some of that blue black. Okay? 
Get rid of those white gaps. Not all of them, just some of them. With a bit of that blue black. And then with your small brush, you're gonna come up here. And where your gaps are, you're gonna do exactly the same. Paint a little bit of the blue black. Or if you're sketching with pencils, just go up there and add a bit. When, you, when you're at art school, you're basically, we, we're talking in value terms. You're talking about value. Hang on, let me show you something. I'm gonna show, hang on, I'm coming back, I'm coming back. Ooh. Okay, so these are, these are two things that I have up in the studio. And this is for kids, but you know, you're beginners. So this is a sheet that says value. So you can see black to white is about going from darkest to lightness. That is what value is, going from darkest to lightest through shade and tone, okay? That's all value is. For example, on blue, you've got, if that's your 10, that's your eight, that's your four, that's your two. So you go down your color, color range. So you don't have to, people think you have to like add loads of white or loads of black. No, 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 no. When you're doing one tone pictures, you add a little bit and just push and nurse the color to change. Don't add too much. So if you're adding black pencil over blue, in one area, add a little bit. In the next area, add a little bit and add a purple pencil. In the next area, just add a purple pencil. And all of a sudden, when it's all together, you will see the variety, okay? So you just need to trust the process. Okay, so that is pretty much our darkest done. Okay, peeps, our darkest is done. Now, if I say to you that that first color that we blended on the scale of 10 being the darkest, and 10 is not black, 10 is our blue black that we've just done. If that is our 10, and this first pale blue that we did for our background is like a two, let's say, or two or a three, I want you to get to a five. So you need to find a color that's a mid-tone between those two, all right? I can't help you, I can explain it, but you've got to mix it yourself. And I suggest you just get a piece of paper, a copy piece of paper, something out of the bin, whatever, and just mix it up and then just try it. You might need to add a little bit more blue or purple, or you might need to add a little bit more white. You're in trouble, I know. Stick to painting, leave the techie alone! I knew you were watching. Mwah! God, I love you, David. <laughs> Me and my husband, so I might get a little bit emotional, but David is the yang of my yin. And I know we all say that, but without a, so I met David when I was, he's gonna kill me, 19. No, he was 19. I think I was 20, not sure. Something like that. Anyway, we met then and we had a little bit of a rocky start and that's because I had another boyfriend. <laughs> Don't talk about it. But the reason why it was a rocky start is because when I met him, he absolutely filled my bucket. Everything that I wanted, everything that I looked for, everything that I needed that, that I couldn't give myself, he just gives me. And he is just the most amazing man. And we have now been together. I'm not even going to guess because I get it wrong every time. Something like I think we met in 92 or 3 ish, not sure. So let's say we've been together 25 years, could be a few more. And every, David's a mathematician and, and, you know, he's left brain, I'm right brain. That's just the way our life is. I see colours, he sees shades of grey, and that's fine. But he, me and him, honestly, he's the bomb. And this morning we sat in bed together, nothing rude, I'm not going, I'm not, I'm still PC here, PG. We, um, 99, <laughs> he just said 99, I love it. Um, I'm still going PG, but I sat on one end of the bed after having a shower in my jammies. He sat on the other end, and we were just chatting, and I just... I just said, this is lovely. I just want to hang out with you. He's just an amazing man. 
He is an amazing man. Okay, so hopefully in that chit chat you have mixed your tone five. Okay, so that's what you need, tone five. So I've, I'm now behind, I've got to mix it. You can see my behind while I mix. Hang on. Got to get my tone five. So here we go. I reckon that's it. I have no idea. I haven't done a tone chart, but I reckon we're about there. Oh, no, that's a seven. A bit more white. Okay, I've got my five. Have you got your five? Are you ready to go? I'm going to hold mine up so you can see what my tone five is. I went there. That's kind of my tone five, there. So it's that blue, bit of white, smushed together. I ended up having a bit of that blue too. That's my tone five, all right? Which means I can still push dark and I can still push light. All right, my tone five. Are you ready? Give me a thumbs up if you're ready. Let me know that you've got your tone five. If not, you're going to have to watch and mix. I'm starting to the right of my dark area, okay? Here we go. Big brush, going back to the chunks. See, none of you are responding to me, which means you're all mixing like a hell, and you're thinking, oh my God, I'm not ready, I'm not ready. Hopefully you are, because I talk enough. Okay, tone five, this side. Here we go. Chunk, 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 chunk. Chunk. You can see I'm leaving, I'm particular, specifically leaving an area so that you see that hard edge. If you're using pastels or pencils, do exactly the same. Create that kind of feathered look, okay? Create that kind of feathered look. Okay, I've done two layers. Then down here, I'm doing a third layer. Chunk. Chunk, right off the edge there, right off the edge there, one more there and stop. So you can see it's like a, it's like a little parcel of colour, a little parcel of colour. Okay, over here, chunk, chunk, chunk. I, I, because of my easel, I am going to have to go from bottom up, but you go down if you can. I've got to do it the other way because of my easel's in the way. Chunk, okay? That, that area there is done with a five. Coming over here, here we go. Chunk, 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 chunk. The reason why I keep saying chunk, <laughs> well, one, I'm obviously drinking wine, is so that you can see where I'm doing brush strokes. That's the idea. So you can see when I'm doing a brush stroke, all right? So all of that is pretty much done. I don't want so much white showing, so I'm just I'm just doing it again, those ones. I don't want oodles of white showing. No, that's okay. Okay. Is anybody have any problems? Are you keeping up? Am I going too fast? Let me know. Hopefully I'm going okay. Okay, so this is all tone five, peeps, yeah? Tone five, I'm going to go here. And I'm just going to go up to meet that blue. And I'm just at the top there and I'm coming backwards. And now I'm going to stop and let you catch up. Just in case you're starting to stress. Karen's gone too fast. we are all got our knickers in a twist. I'm just going to get all those five, the areas of five, coloured in. Just trying to get around that eye. Okay, I'm stopping, okay, stopping, 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 great speed, good, 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 good. My nose is itchy, why have I got, every time I, I'm in here with a light, my nose gets itchy, it does my nothing. Okay, great speed, good, 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 we're happy, we're happy. Okay, once you've done your tone five, I want you to paint your beacon with the same colour. Now, I realise that those of you using watercolour pencils, Sam, it's going to be slightly different for you and your finish is going to be slightly different. But do you know what? 
You need to just own that. That's fine. Your art is your art. The finish is going to be different. It doesn't matter. The fact is, on a Saturday night, you're having a great time. You're here with me. You're hanging out with all my friends. Brilliant, brilliant. All right? Don't worry about it. So I'm just going, I'm just painting my beak, okay? I'm just doing, I'm trying to keep the, I've just gone over there, I'm just going to rub it back. I'm trying to keep that hard edge. I've just painted the beak in with my tone five, okay? Painted my beak in with my tone five. Okay. Are you ready to move on if I move on? Let me know, let me know. Give me some love. All right. This is tone five. I want you to get to a three. So what are you gonna to do to get to a three? You're gonna add some white. For those of you using pastel and watercolour pencils, it means on this part and this part, where we're going to do a tone three, you're going to colour less to let some of the white paper show. Less strokes. I might just show you and then... and um, So let me get another piece of paper. I'm coming back. Okay, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. Um, so you're using watercolour pencils. All right, so I'm going to come right up here. So if you're doing watercolour pencils, I'm going to have to stick that in my hair a minute because I can't hold everything. Okay, if you're doing watercolour pencils, oh, look, it sticks. Um, let me just draw a shape. So that, that's the crest there going up there, right? You are going to need to do sections like that, sections like that, sections like that, sections like that. And if you've got two colours, I don't know what this colour is, I think it's a pinky colour, a purpley colour, you can add in a couple of tones of purple with it. But you end up getting a lot of white showing. So I'm just going to move that forward so you can see it. Hang on, let me put it right in front of my face so I can see that you can see it. There you go. All right, so you end up using the negative space. It's very arty. You're going to use the negative space to create your white. Okay? It's really hard to see which way I've got to put it. But you get, oh, there we go. Boom! Done it. Okay, so hopefully that will help. I've got to take that pencil out of my hair. If you're using pastels, it's going to be the same thing, um, Kelly. You need to create the negative space, so don't colour it all in. Actually, with pastels, it's a little bit easier because you could use white chalk at the end over the top with actual line work. You could do that, all right? Okay, got a nice smudge there, lovely. <laughs> Never mind. Okay, so let's make, let's make a three. So my three is very similar to my background colour. But do you remember when we did our background colour, I said, let's, uh, uh, I added, I didn't say, I said you could do whatever colour you wanted, but I added just a tiddly bit of purple. And so by adding that tiddly bit of purple, it kind of moved it into the lilac colour, which means that when I'm doing my three now with blue and white, it's obviously going to be different, yeah? Okay, so we are going to go from the eyeball I want you to ignore that bit. We're going to use the smaller brush in a minute. I want you to go from the second row of brushes and we're going to go up. Chunk it up all the way to the top of your canvas. Try and make sure you keep that curve. And that's as far as I'm going. I want the white to show through. Okay, I want the white to show through. And then with your three, you're going to go out the side here. And you want your brush stroke to go beyond your guideline. So wherever your guideline was, you want your brush stroke to go just beyond it. All 
All right. Look at that. We nearly got our cockatoo. So cool. I love it. I love it. I love it. In a minute, we're going to add more black. We're going to add some colour. We're going to add more white. Don't panic. It's all about layering. Let me just check the time. Quarter past eight. Okay, I need to speed up. Okay, I'm going to add some more white to that number three. And I want you to get it down to a number two. Okay? So if I just show you on mine. There was my number three. Now I've gone paler again. Still a long way from white, but I am paler again. Okay, I'm going to go to my small brush now. So I'm just giving it a really good wash out because it had so much dark paint in it. Okay, so give it a really good wash out. Get to that light tone, your number two. And you're going to go, you're basically going to add an extra layer of feathers, which goes where the white areas are, I want you to kind of use your brush to create little feathers, pockets of white. Well, it's not white because it's your number, your two, but you're basically going to fill in those gaps. Where the white is, you're going to fill in those gaps and you should be able to drag it over your tone five. So watch, watch me right now. Everybody pause and watch. Look. Put my brush there where the white space is and drag it oh, and drag it over the tone five and then you end up filling that gap. Where the white space is, drag it over the five. So you end up getting that extra layer. You still keep a little bit of the paper showing but you sort of fill up the gaps basically and that's the plan. Just in this section here, we're just filling up the gaps. Don't have to you don't have to paint every single section, okay? Some paper showing is fine. This is an arty painting, people. But we do want to get rid of any line, any line that you had on the head, you want to get rid of that. And I'm going to do exactly the same by the eye. Okay, so I've pretty much done that whole section. Okay, I've pretty much done that whole section. Now I'm going to come up to the top of the cockatoo. Now where I'm doing this with paint, you guys, you might want to add in a couple of extra strokes with your um, watercolour pencil, or you might not. You might have got to the point where you go, yep, that's looking good, I don't need to do anything else. Alright, see that ugly space there? I've got a really ugly space where it's gone from dark to light. I just need to fill it in. So you end up having those gaps filled in. I'm going to do the same down here. Just going to drag through the gaps with, the, with my number three colour. Not over painting. It's really important that you don't think you've got to blend it. It's not blending. It's just dragging over the top. Okay? Okay, while you've got your little brush, go back to your number five colour, and your number five colour, you want to just go round the eye, and get to the beak. So you end up getting, to, get, getting that kind of round feature around the eye. And I'm just going to Put in a couple of number threes there just to blend those colours. So you can see I've got that starburst look around the eye. And if you if you um, end up overpainting an area and you think, no, no, I've lost it, you can see there, look, I've just got a bit of light blue that's gone over my black. And I don't, oh, sorry, not my black, my blue black. So I'm just going to get my blue black. I'm just going to go over the top of it. And then that creates the next layer of feathers over the top again, all right? So you just, you keep playing with that whole mixture. Good job, everybody. You're doing really, really well. 
Now, are we okay? Anybody got any questions? Please let me know if you've got any questions. We need to give some definition to the top of the crown here, where the feathers are. We need to give some definition. So to do that, I'm going to go to my blue black or my purple, if you need to mix a bit more. I'm going to, I'm using, well you can use a round brush if you want to use a round brush. In fact, let's use a round brush. So I'm using a small round brush and I want to basically create a line around the, the, the very edge of the Mohican. So I'm going to push down and I'm just going to let it flick up. Push down, flick up. Okay. So it's with a dark blue colour. Push down, flick up, and you get that kind of segregation. And then we're going to do exactly the same. So I'm going to use that technique to kind of split the feathers. So I'm using that dark colour, I'm kind of going between my brush strokes, and I'm just adding in some almost like... Um, lines I guess really just to show where the feathers are starting to split. I'm not doing it from top to bottom, I'm not I'm not hard drawing it in, I'm just doing a little indication that those feathers are starting to split. We're going to do exactly the same here. Oh whoops that was a bit of a lump. Woo! Stop easy Carol. So from the outside in, 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 we're now starting to build the detail. So you start to have those, just those little areas of detail that start to build what the, what's happening with the parrot. McCall, cockatoo. I'm going to do the same down its beak. So I'm going to do that dark blue. I'm going to go down around the front of the beak. Make it a little bit wider at the, at the area where I'm starting and then thin it out around the outside edge of that beak. Just like that. So you start to get that little section of its beak. Now what we need to do is add a bit of white to our beak and a bit of lightness. So your number three that you had, your number three, your palest colour that you made, we want to add just a little bit, and now I'm using what I would, I'm going to move this forward, okay? I'm going to make sure that I'm not in, ooh, that way. I want to make sure that I'm not in the little, little box. So you can see, I'm using a little scribbly technique. Now, those of you that are using colour pencils that can't really colour, release that colour, you could perhaps use another colour to create this, like a yellow or an orange. Basically, we're just adding a bit of lightness to our um, beak. Then I'm going to push my brush and I'm going to swoop down, just so that we get a kind of, a bit of texture that comes out on our, on our beak there. Okie dokie. And where we've got our feathers on this outside, do you remember this was our number five colour? I'm just going to literally create a kind of, I guess a, a, an outline. I'm trying not to call it an outline because I don't want you to go hard lining it. But I'm just putting a little bit of white that goes around the outside and then I just stroke it in. And it just creates the definition around those feathers just around the outside there. Okay. I'm going to do the same for these feathers here. So I'm just starting to split the feathers up and add in some highlight. I need a bit more white peeps. So you will need some plain white now because we're up to our lightest colour. Our lightest colour is our plain white. Plain white? Is there any other white? You know what I mean. Bright white. Here we go. Brilliant white. So follow me. 
Now, if you can't use Brea White on your um, watercolour pencils, that's okay. If you don't need to, you could go a different colour or you could just let it sit as it is. Just make that decision yourself. Because I haven't done a practice, I'm not exactly sure how that would pan out, but I reckon you could perhaps use a purple maybe or something like that to get a different colour. And what you might want to do if you're using watercolour pencils is now start to put a bit of water on it and see how that blend goes. So you can now start to blend in some of those feathers and then see how it goes. Here's a top tip. Once you've put your water on, go get a hairdryer, dry it off, and then you might be able to add some extra drawing afterwards. I use hair dryers all the time. All of the time. I hair dried a picture earlier today. Okay, so all I'm doing is finding kind of the areas where I know that I created feather groupings. Remember when we went chunk, chunk, chunk? And I'm just kind of highlighting the end of them. So I'm highlighting the end of the feather there, and then I'm just drawing back into the feather just to give it that lightness, help let the painting breathe. So you can see down, can you see, oh, I'm gonna move it back so you can see that bit. Uh, okay, so I'm just moving it back. You can see I'm down at the bottom here, I'm doing the same. So I've gone right around the outside and I'm just flicking my brush to give it some texture at the bottom. I don't want to make, I don't want to blend this. This is not about blending. It's just about adding in some lines that are giving some texture, okay? So it's making it look a bit more like feathers. And so to do that, you add light on top of the dark. Just in little patches. And in a minute, we're going to use that golden brown and that's going to finish off our painting. Okay, I'm just going to add a couple of flurries of feather shape just whack, just around the eye there to give that shape around the eye. Leanne says, looking good. I'll try another time. You're welcome, Leanne. Anytime, darling, you know that. Okay, Pete, you need an absolute piece of jet black now. Get your jet black out. This is not a blue black. This is jet black. Get your jet black, black pencil, black pastel, and we need to do his eyeball, okay? We're going to go right round with a circle, and I want you to try and leave a piece that's not being coloured in, and that's going to be our highlight. Literally, right round and leave a piece that's not coloured in, that's going to be our highlight. And then while you've got that black, we're going to add the nostril here, which is a diamond shape. So it's a diamond shape, super easy. We all know how to do a diamond. Beautiful. Doing really well, everybody. Really, really well. Now, you know how we did that texturizing with the white? I want you to do the same with jet black. So no blue black, jet black, okay? If you're not sure, take two seconds and just look up and I'll show you. So starting at the darkest blue black, I'm now going and adding black on top of it to create the areas of feather. This is how it's going to start to look like our black macaw or black cockatoo. So you're adding in lines of black, you go across the top of your feathers and you paint back in, just like you did with your white, exactly the same process. And this dark black just will really cut through and get that depth that you're looking for, okay? Look, I'm gonna bring this forward. Here we go. Checking, technically checking. Ooh, there. All right, so I wanna keep, there, that's a really good image. Okay, I wanna keep, the light on there because if I keep the light on there in fact if I put the other one on you should really see the contrast not that one that one you should start to see a contrast okay so if I come here look I draw on the edge of that and then I paint in 
and you should be able to see the black is deeper than the blue. Okay, I'm going to do the same. I'm going to do the same here on the um, feathers down in front. So I'm going to go a line, 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 line. So I'm sort of where those chunks were before. I'm just now with it adding in some black and it's really adding the depth that I need to make it look like a black parrot. If you're at the edge of a edge of a group of um, let me just move that back a tad there. So you can see I've got a white space there. So I'm going to go across with my black and then I'm going to paint into it. And that kind of cuts it off and creates that you know how when you actually see feathers, they are actually in kind of like groupings, aren't they? I'm going to get a nice black line round the beak and the eye. I'm going to add some swooshes of real black as well. And I can see, watch me now. Everybody watch. Two, three, three, two, one. Put my brush in the dark area and swoop it out and it will create that drag into the pale area and it's the end of the brush that drags and creates the like um the fine bit and that's all to do with pressure if you push too hard on your brush you'll end up with a really really thick mark so you need to push and drag and let go let go practice on a bit of paper if you have got a bit of paper to hand just have a little practice before you do it okay gonna move it back full screen now there we go all right, I'm just going to put in some black here. In between that dark blue, so where we have our blue black, we've now gone to number 10. Number 10 is black. So we're just adding in some black feathers in that area with the blue black. And you see this area where we've got the light? I am just going to add a couple of bits of black in there too because at the end of the day it's supposed to be a black bird so we want some areas we do want some bits of black to help draw through and hopefully you should be able to see what where your black area needs to go and you can add in those blacks yourself of course you can follow mine that's absolutely fine feel like I need some black in this bit here so I'm just if you have to stand back and look at it and you kind of you kind of read it as a story and you kind of go oh okay I can see what I'm missing and you just need to add in just some little bits of tone just to transition the colors so I'm just using my brush I'm not keep on going into the black it's got black on it so I'm just kind of feathering it through some of these empty spaces and just adding a little black just to pull the colours round. Now I'm going to add a bit of black there on the end of his on the end of his beak. Okay, so that is the blue and the black all done, people. Now we're on to the contrast colour, which I'm going to use is this, and we are going to aim to finish this in five minutes. Okay, five minutes, people. This is going to be finished. So I'm going to add. This is golden ochre. If you don't have this, you might want to use yellow, an orangey colour. If you've got orange and you don't want it to be so orange, add a bit of brown, it will take it back. If you've got yellow, add a bit of brown to your yellow and you'll get this colour. Okay, has anyone got any comments for me? We're aiming to get this finished in the next five minutes, peeps, okay? So if you've got any comments, now's the time. Let me know how you're going. If you've got any worries or concerns. I ran over last week and it's already half past eight, so I want to finish it up, okay? These are definitely finishing touches. There's no black outlining like last week. This is just finishing touches, people, all right? 95% of this is painted. Okay, so what, you, what, what your options are. You can either just stop and watch me and then paint it afterwards. You can 
stop, watch me, and then watch it on the replay. Or you can look up, look down, look up, look down. I don't mind. But I'm going to carry on just so I don't keep you so long as I did last week. I felt so guilty. I felt so guilty. After I finished, I need, I, I've got to stop talking. I understand that. But after I finished painting with you last week, David and Daisy looked at me and went, what's the matter, Mum? And I was, honestly, I felt really sad. I felt like I'd let you down. I thought the painting was too hard. I felt like I pushed you too fast. And I was so deep, I was so sad and, on, and flat by the end of the class. Normally I finish on a high, I've had so much fun. And last week I was like, oh, I let my babies down, let my friends down. Thank you, Karen. That was tricky using watercolour pencils, but still fun. You're welcome. Mwah. Good night. See you later. Uh, yours is going well, thanks. Awesome. Okay, well, let's finish off the last bit. The last bit is the golden touches, okay? So this is a bit of highlight. This is a bit of, give it a bit of pow. Give it a bit of pizzazz, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to start at the bottom of these... Um, feather areas and we're going to use this golden area a bit like we did with the black and the white and we're going to add some punch to our little cockatoo so draw across i might come closer so you can see that hang on let's get it in that camera and in that camera it's complicated okay so watching just going across the bottom go across and then pull it up go across and pull it up. It doesn't really matter where it goes. Okay? Doesn't really matter where it goes. Now, this is where it changes. I want you to try and do this. Look, watch me. So you go down, paint with little dashes. Oh, you can't see that. Hang on. Whoa, go back there. Okay, now you can see. You can see in that camera. Okay, so you start here and you paint down. You want to go down and do a V and then come back up. And it creates that bottom of the feather. Does that make sense? I'm using my little brush. I'm going down to a V point and then I'm going back up. And I'm not going to do it on all of them, but I'm just going to do it on some just to give myself that real punch of colour. You can copy my entire spots if you want, where I'm putting them. Here, I'm just going to add in literally dashes. Down to a point and back up. Down to a point and back up. So if you're using pencils or pastels, you might use a total contrast colour and just go over the top and this will just add some vibrancy. Otherwise, it's a bit one, one dimensional. It's a bit one tone. And so just adding this will just pop it forward. And to me, I think this is the finishing touches that just looks amazing. I love, 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 love. So in the dark patches, we're literally just going to use our brush and we're just going to pop in some colour like that. Like, you know, there's just little bursts of colour in, in flecks of colour in the feathers. As you get closer to the eye, they're going to turn into dots, people, okay? Turn into dots. So you're just going to get dots of colour and then you can push your brush down as you move away from the eye. Smaller as they get closer, Bigger, so when you're doing them down here, you can use the side of your brush. All right, use the side of your brush. But when they're close up to the eye like this, they are literally going to be a dot from the point of your brush. Okay, as they pull out, those dots are going to get bigger. Nearly done. Here I'm gonna do slightly more fleck type things. And they're gonna be exactly the same up here. So I think I might add a little gold one there. And a little gold one there. in at the very back there 
Okay, now the, the, hard, the last hardest bit to do is with, around your black eye, I want you to use the, the colour that you've done for your feathers, I want you to go around the eye. So I'm going to have to stand and I'm going to have to do it in front of it because I, well, I'm going to, hang on, where's my glasses? People, I need my glasses. I need my glasses. Glasses. Okay. Oh, I wobbled you. Okay, I need to concentrate. There is, there is no talking. Shh. Here we go. I'm having to pick up colour each time because obviously my painting's wet, which means that it's starting to pick up the purple. So every time I pick up the purple, I'm dipping it back in. So I've just got that fresh golden colour again. Okay, so that's the ring around the eye, like that. And then, just have a quick look. And then finally, I'm gonna mix that golden colour with a bit of white. And I end up with that kind of colour. Can you see? Kind of like a, a pale version of it. And I'm just going to put some, oh, that's a bit too pale. I need it a bit darker than that. I want it lighter than the original, but that's it. And I'm just going to add a few scribbly bits to the beak. And I also want to go round the diamond. Woo! We've done it! That's freaked you out, isn't it? That was so loud. Okay, that's it. That is the painting finish. It is only 2041. Awesome. So I nailed it. Who knew I could? I know you knew I could. Ah, uh, I made mine more of a cartoon look. Yeah, you're hard on yourself. Oh, bless you. Thank you. It was an awesome class last week. Such a fabulous piece. I needed the extra time. Yeah, no worries. Too hard on yourself. Thank you. Okay, awesome. Hopefully everybody has enjoyed tonight. As always, mwah, you have filled my bucket with love. I absolutely love hanging out with you. Um, what am I going to do if you never come back? Don't leave me. No, um, so you might have seen, just while you're finishing off painting, you might have seen that I am launching a VIP club or a members club. There will still be free painting online, but for those of you that have enjoyed this and actually kind of found, unlocked a whole world that you never even knew was part of you, maybe you've kind of realised that it's a bit like going to the gym. Um, you know, the endorphins are released and you kind of feel great after you've painted. I, I definitely do. Um, maybe you'd like to learn some more. Certainly in an hour and a half, I am, you know, there's only so much I can show you. There's only so much that I can teach you technically. There's only so much that, there's only, there's only certain types of paintings as I showed you last week that you can do in an hour and a half, two hours. Otherwise you'll be on two hours and then it's a different kind of class. Um, and so I've decided that, um, you know, at the end of the day, people are enjoying this. Um, people have enjoyed me, weird. It's funny, David has been saying to me for years, Karen, put your stuff online. I mean, I've been teaching art for, on and off, 15, 15 years, 20 years, um, in different guises, mostly to kids, um, while my children were small. But David has said for years, you need to put your art online, let other people do it. And um, I kind of never thought, I don't know, I never actually thought that people would be interested in watching me. And I just thought, you know, I'm too fat, I'm not pretty enough, don't have the kind of look. And I just thought, you know, it just, in fact, I was almost too embarrassed 
to tell my husband what was holding me back. Um, I mean, look, you scratch the skin of all of us and we're all riddled with insecurities, aren't we? Um, we all worry about what we look like and who looks like what and somebody's doing it better. And although I am a massively confident person, and I am, I am confident, of course I am, I know that, but actually I'm also, I do lack an awful lot of confidence. I don't have a huge amount of, um, I have belief that I can achieve, but I don't have, I don't have a lot of self-love, I suppose. And so because I don't have a lot of self-love, um, I really, I really couldn't see how I could video myself and people would want to watch me. But you know what? COVID's done an amazing thing for me. It's pushed me into a corner and made me fight my demons and made me realize I am actually fine, just as I am. And if you want to mute me, you mute me. If you don't want to chat with me, you don't have to. If you want to watch me and just watch me, you can. And actually what I've realized is that's fine. Everybody's entitled to that. And I'm not going to be for everyone, but actually I'm okay because a lot of people do like me or not like me, but like what I can give and what I can share and how I can teach you and how I can get you from a plain piece of paper to a blinking amazing painting. And that's not me that's done that. That's you, you fabulous person. You have done that yourself. You have unlocked whatever is inside your mind and you have unlocked your inhibitions and you have created that fantastic art piece. And that's enough. So from me to you, virtual huggy works. And uh, I'll see you soon, as they say. Bye. Oh, I don't know how to shut it down. Oh, end stream. Hang on, hang on. It's all new, you see. I'm like, oh, bye! Oh, oh, blooper. I don't know how to shut it. I have no idea. David's like, oh. Hang on. End stream. I've got it, I've got it, I've got it. End stream. Ready? I can do it. I can, okay, rewind. And you people, virtual hug. <laughs>